Hey, uh, so Sony was probably supposed to announce the new lineup of phones at MWC in Barcelona, but that was cancelled because of the coronavirus, so they just came out and launched it today. So this is the new Xperia 1, 2, or Mark 2. First of all, let me just put this as cleanly as I can possibly put. I've always thought that Sony's lineup of phones across the years has been always a little interesting, but they've always managed to make some mistakes that inevitably made them a bad value proposition. And this time they're launching their flagship at 1100 euros. But as flagships go these days, it's what you probably would expect. So I spend most of today trying to find the tiny little details that usually are missed in presentations and particularly when there is no presentation in beautiful marketing videos. Usually they don't talk about the small details that make a big difference when it actually comes to day-to-day -day life when using a phone. So this is my list in, in no particular order of features that I think you should keep an eye on if you are considering this to be your next phone. The number Number one feature that I think makes this phone incredible is the naming. If you think about it, no other phone on the market has a weirder naming scheme than Sony's flagship line. You start with the Z1, Z2, Z3, and then of course you get the X performance, and then of course after the X performance, you get the XZ, and then you get the XZ2 and the XZ3, and then and then after that, it's, it's pretty obvious, you get the Xperia 10, and then after the 10 comes the 1, and after the 1, of course, comes the 1, 2. It's, that's the main... <laughs> All joking aside, I think one of the main features that Sony is pushing is the display, it's a 6.5 inch 21 by 9 OLED that they are pushing with a weird thing. It's, it's a 60 hertz panel in a year where most manufacturers are going to be pushing higher refresh rate monitors, but they're talking about a motion blur type of feature that should mimic the feel of high refresh rate. I don't know if you could tell by my voice, but the skepticism could not be higher. If I get my chance to get my hands on a phone, I will surely give that a look, but it definitely sounds like a weird take. The screen looks pretty good. It's 21 by nine, but Sony's just pushing the cinematic viewing experience when we are living in a world where larger format is becoming the norm in Hollywood and the aspect ratio is always shifting. And also if you're watching online content or if you're watching Netflix or something like that, most shows usually are closer to 16 by nine. They have smaller bars and smaller bars when compared to traditional movies. And if you go watch like the next Christopher Nolan movie or 1917, they're not 21 by nine. And if you're gonna be watching that on the phone, there's gonna be some cropping of course. And I don't know, it's it's up to you if you wanna crop content or if you want to leave bigger black bars. But for day-to-day -day use, it definitely looks like a good feature and a good aspect ratio to have multi-windows. Also, it's not a 10-bit panel. Uh, they're talking about some two-bit smoothing on an eight-bit panel. Not sure if that's gonna be noticeable in HDR content, but I think it should be fine. The second feature that Sony is definitely putting a big focus this year is the camera. They're using a sensor that is twice the size of last year's. It's not as big as Samsung's S20 Ultra, 108 megapixel, but it sounds like a good sensor and a good upgrade when compared to any other phone that came out last year. But as I've said in the past, the biggest thing in mobile photography and mobile videography is definitely the computational photography side of things. And hopefully Sony has taken a big leap forward when compared to previous years. A lot of the marketing around the photography side comes from Sony talking about technology used in the alpha line of cameras like this A7 III that they're gonna be porting into the mobile phone. They talked about continuous 20 frames per second with autofocus and auto exposure which should be a first on a mobile phone. They talked about eye tracking for both people and animals. That should be interesting with the larger sensor in a mirrorless camera with a full frame sensor. It's a game changing feature. 
but most of the times when the sensors become smaller the field of view becomes smaller so you have less difference between the background and the foreground so having pinpoint accuracy to focus on an eye maybe not be that noticeable in real life but it sure sounds like a good thing on the video side of things they sure talked a lot about features that they brought in from the cine line of cameras they talked about something resembling a picture profile when you're recording video they looked a lot like a lookup table that could be applied to your footage and that can be somewhat interesting if you want to give your video a little bit of a cinematic look as they call it but i don't know in real life it doesn't really work that well but if they had professional colorists work on these lots it should be a good thing to use a lot of focus on all the manual controls that you can have when recording video you can pretty much control everything from the shutter speed to the iso to the white balance to the manual focus even and that looks pretty interesting they talked about recording native 21 by 9 video which is a cool thing the phone will do all the 4ks that you expect until 4k 60 and finally two small but honorable mentions the phone will come with bluetooth 5.1 and that comes with a feature called directional location that pretty much looks like an open standard for what Apple tried to do with the U1 chip on last year's iPhones you're probably going to need devices that support it but in the future with more and more Bluetooth 5.1 devices coming to market that hopefully will be a widely supported standard across devices and, and ecosystems there was mentions about a feature called dynamic vibrating system that somewhat sound like what they have on their TVs but I don't know i might be mistaken on that but if it is it, it definitely sounds interesting and a good way to remove maybe a little bit of the forehead even if the phone is not leading any sort of top charts for highest screen to body ratio all of these features plus the fact that the base model will come with 256 gigs of storage a headphone jack which will pretty much just make it one of the very few phones that will come out this year that still has it Plus the fact that it's USB-C, it's IP68 waterproof, it's notchless, it's screen holeless, and um, it looks like a good phone. Hopefully Sony will be able to market it somewhat well. Um, but if the way that they released it is anything to go by, I don't know if they'll be able to sell that many of them. So yeah, um, that's been it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you already know what it is. Click the subscribe button down below and the tiny bell thingy. Um, if you're new around here, it's, it's pretty much just my face and technology trying to make good tech videos about things that actually interest me. Um, yeah, uh, bye. Cuerpo